Not all deliveries are created equal. Some women will have easy birth experiences and some will have difficult ones. We always hope for the best outcome, of course, but whatever case it may be, if you decide you want to breastfeed your baby, there is one big rule to follow. To initiate breastfeeding within an hour after birth or as soon as possible and make sure you consistently breastfeed every two to three hours or by demand. This does not come easy to some and there are a lot of reasons why. But let me simplify what the ultimate goal is. The breast has to be emptied every three hours, either by putting the baby directly on the breast, doing hand expression, or using a manual or electric breast pump. Colostrum is the baby's first food. It's rich in macronutrients, such as protein, fats, and carbohydrates. It also contains growth factor, immunoglobulin, and minerals. It is a natural antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, promotes a healthy gut, and an immunity booster, giving your baby a lot of advantages at the start of life. Therefore, it is crucial for them to be fed the colostrum on the first days after birth. Did you know that a pregnant woman's body starts producing colostrum between 12 to 18 weeks? Yes, that's right. So your body is made to produce the best food for your baby, even when the baby is not born yet. This is truly amazing. Welcome to Mother Baby Central, your resource for transformational information regarding pregnancy, postpartum, newborn care, and baby's first year of life. Breastfeeding seems pretty straightforward and easy, right? If only we live in a perfect world, then it probably is, but we don't. There are situations which places the moms in the offense if things don't happen as planned. What if the baby is too sleepy for the first 24 hours and will not even open the mouth to latch and breastfeed? What if you get moderate to severe side effects from the anesthesia after a scheduled or unplanned C-section? What if the baby is born prematurely? What if the baby, although born full term, has to be separated from you due to a medical necessity, whether it's you who needs the med medical attention or the baby? A lot of what ifs. If you want to have a head start on breastfeeding, you need to be aware of the different worst case scenarios that might happen and make a solid plan. The support of your partner is crucial in making breastfeeding successful. Therefore, he needs to be on board and be as ready as you are once the baby is born. Establishing a good or adequate milk supply is a huge factor in being successful in breastfeeding. Let us review the reasons why a woman who gives birth might not have enough supply. First, losing a lot of blood during delivery, which if you watch my video about why I failed at breastfeeding, this is a, one of the main reasons why. Another reason is a woman had breast surgery, like breast reduction. Next, a woman has an underlying medical condition like PCOS, diabetes, thyroid problem, or any other metabolic disorder. If any of these are present, the next best step is to work closely and partner with a lactation consultant. Consider doing an outpatient consultation with a lactation specialist so you will have continued support after hospital discharge and beyond. Did you also know that if you are scheduled for a C-section, you can hand express some colostrum a day or two before your surgery? Run it by your doctor first to make sure you are not at risk for preterm labor. Just to be on the safe side, most likely it should be okay as long as everything is handy dandy or normal. But why would you want to do that? You don't have to, but it's one way of preparing for the baby's feeding if something comes up unexpectedly. Remember the what ifs I mentioned earlier? Yep, it is better to come prepared, right? Before you do a hand expression, make sure you have a small container to store the colostrum. Place it in the refrigerator or the freezer after. Make sure to label it by putting the date and time you express the colostrum. Don't forget to bring it to the hospital and transport it in a small ice cooler bag. And um, this way, you won't feel stressed out just in case something happens beyond what you expect. Include the ice cooler bag uh, with the colostrum on it in your packing list uh, on what to bring to the hospital. 
Just a touch briefly on hand expression. Make sure you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before the procedure. Rub your hands together to make it warm, or you can take a warm shower and gently massage your breast while you're in there. Once you're in bed, make sure you have some privacy, some fresh water next to you, and a warm compress nearby. Put some soothing music on and relax your shoulder muscles with any tension. Massage both your breasts, making sure you get every section. You can hold your breast like a C, an inch away from the areola. Press back, squeeze, and then release. Do both breasts alternately. Make sure you have a spoon or a small container to store the colostrum. Good colostrum can be fed immediately to the baby. And if the baby's already born, dad can do that job pretty much. So how do you establish a good milk supply? The obvious answer is to breastfeed every two to three hours or by demand consistently without any supplementation. If your baby is able to suckle on the breast within the first hour after birth, that is great. Continue to offer the breast every two to three hours. If you watch my other video about what happens on the baby's first 24 hours, you should know what to expect. The baby is going to be very sleepy on day one, but do not let the baby sleep for longer periods of time. You have to wake the baby up every three hours, ideally, because it is very important for the baby to eat and especially get all the benefits from the colostrum. Do a lot of skin to skin so when the baby is ready to nurse, he can just crawl to the breast and nurse immediately. There are three things you need to make sure of. First, there should be a good latch. The baby should have as much of the nipple and areola in, inside his mouth. The nipple should reach towards the back of the mouth. It should not hurt at all when the baby's on the breast. You might feel some discomfort initially, especially if it's your first time breastfeeding, but it should feel better after a few minutes. When you take the baby off from the breast, the nipple should not look like it has a different shape, like it looks more elongated and seems pinched. Be on top of the feeding. The baby should be fed 8 to 12 times in 24 hours. And third, the baby should be suckling and swallowing during the feeding. There should be a strong and rhythmic suck and swallow. The baby should not use your nipple as a pacifier. And you can tell due to the weakness and the irregularity of the suck that the baby does. If the baby is not a good breastfeeder, then there should be a backup plan. Hand expression. The goal is to empty your breast consistently by manually expressing the milk out. If you do this vital step, your mind will tell your body to produce more milk for the baby. And the best way to do this is hand expression. Yes, the hospital has an electric breast pump, but usually for the first day, it's more effective to express the colostrum by hand because the colostrum is really thick. You can use the electric breast pump, but do the hand expression first. If the baby is separated from you, you have to hand express consistently every three hours for around 20 to 30 minutes, just like when you're breastfeeding each time. But if you include the breast massage on the equation, this process can take longer. If your baby is a preemie, this is a good practice to have the electric breast pump in your room so you can pump with the hand expression. The process of hand expression of breast milk should not hurt. If it is, you are doing it wrong. There are videos you can watch showing hand expression, but I am planning to make a dedicated video about it, so stay tuned for that. If the baby gets on the breast but only fed for a few minutes, manually express some breast milk after the baby finishes and feel, feed the milk to the baby right away to top it off. In this way, your milk production will increase since you are emptying your breast and signals your brain to start producing more for the next feeding. You have to remember to keep on feeding the baby colostrum or breast milk in whatever shape or form. If you keep this in mind, your baby will grow, gain weight, have more energy, get all the nutrients and minerals, and thrive. This will give you less stress knowing you have a target goal in mind. For the first day, babies need an average amount of one and a half teaspoon of colostrum every three hours. The baby's stomach is so small, like the size of a marble, so they don't need a lot with each feeding. It's just that they have to be fed very frequently. 
Babies should always associate breastfeeding as a nurturing and calm activity. Therefore, do not wait until the baby cries or get too upset before you start nursing. Crying is a late sign of hunger. Establishing a good milk supply sets you up for success, so you have to protect it in any way you can. There is a steep learning curve in breastfeeding not only to moms, but for the babies as well. So while everyone is learning, taking all the necessary steps to build that milk supply is critical. All right, there you go, moms and dads. I hope you learned something from our video today. Don't forget to share and subscribe so we can grow our community and take this opportunity to create a platform who supports moms and babies' health all over the world. Be well, everyone, and remember to always make this day count. Happy watching! Mm -hmm.